Hey, thanks so much for your time. I actually, uh, this is part two of my series about the little turtle. And uh, I really, you know, someone actually put a note, and I love it, I think it's great. They said, this is too crazy to not be true. And that really is true. You know, the Bible says that God chooses the foolish to confound the wise. And so, sometimes God does give the ridiculous. Uh, but his wisdom is contained within it. And you just, you have to see that. You know, I don't claim anything other than I sleep at night. So, you know, there's no pride in going to bed at night. And it's not like some ability that I have, like I come up with this knowledge. No, it is that I sleep at night. I do my best to get on God's channel frequency. And I do that through prayer. I do that through time in his word, time in his presence. You know, I have a church that I go to. Our church in the last um, 10 years has grown from 200 people to over 15,000. So, you know, I have seen church growth. I've seen how things are done right. I've been in contact with our pastor and <clears throat> have seen how things are to be done right. So it's not like I'm not involved in that which is growing, moving, changing, and seeing the results of someone that is obedient to the Holy Spirit of God. Well, anyways, so as I say at nighttime, when I go to bed, I basically get in the Spirit. You know, uh, John says that he was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. Uh, to get in the Spirit, you have to get close to God. You have to, you know, hear His heartbeat. So if you go to bed at night and you've been watching all the junk of the world, you've been looking at, you know, pornography, you've been, you know, you're probably not going to be on God's channel. You might be on a different channel and you might be receiving dreams and visions and revelations from the devil. And that's kind of how a false prophet comes about is he stays in the world so much that he begins to mix God's wisdom and revelation with the devil's and pretty soon he ends up believing the devil's lies and even rejecting what God tries to reveal to straighten him out. Anyways, so I have a whole series on false prophets. It's called Motives of the Heart. There's like a five-part series. You'll have to check it out. And I'm an evangelist. And uh, as an evangelist, I have a prophetic anointing. That anointing, I believe, came about simply because I love God. I try to spend time in His Word, try to spend time, you know, honoring and respecting the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, and uh, I give God the glory as best as I can. Anyways, um, what I do actually, and this is very helpful, is, is I listen most every night. I actually put in earplugs, and you may not be able to do this. Some people can't sleep with music or they can't sleep with words. Well, I've trained myself through the years that I can listen to someone preaching all night um, or someone you know, singing all night and I can do it all night long and still sleep fantastic and still it's amazing in dreams I can be listening to music and I've had at times happen where I know all night long I listen uh, there's this one lady I love her name is Julie True um, if you get on like an mp3 she has all this free music you can listen to and I can actually listen 10 hours straight of Julie True music and you know it just keeps you under the anointing but anyways um, what I basically have trained myself to do is I can listen to a teaching all night. Now, I know in dreams that there's been times, like I had this one dream, and in the dream I was sitting in a bar. Now, I don't hang out in bars too often. In fact, I don't ever. I think the last time I was in when I was witnessing to somebody. But anyways, in the dream I'm in a bar, and I noticed there was Christian music in the background. Well, I told people in the bar that were sitting around me, I said, isn't this amazing that the influence of the Christian churches that now they're playing Christian music in bars? Well, what it was was I was listening to the music that was in my ear, okay, but in the dream I was in a bar, okay? So anyway, so isn't that, that kind of interesting? So I believe that God has the ability to allow us in our dream life to go so deep into dreams that even though natural music or words are playing in the background, it's completely shut off and he can bring us into a revelatory experience in a dream or a vision where that entire realm is cut off. But it's also possible that the Bible says a dream comes from a multitude of business. So sometimes a dream where you're not in that deep sleep, you know, the Bible says when deep sleep falls upon men, then God seals their instruction. It says that God will speak once, just twice, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, and then 
um, yet man perceives it not. So sometimes man doesn't perceive when God tries to speak to him. Anyways, so last night, I, I, you know, yesterday I did a video about this little turtle and I share the record basically that there was four, you know, areas. One was the, the city lights of the world. The other was grass, and I kind of made a joke, but, you know, uh, you know, my friend was doing grass at the time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, another friend of mine said, well, it's probably, that's probably his addiction. When he gets in the addiction, he starts seeing the city lights, and he thinks everything looks good, and he goes over there, and that's when he gets hurt. Anyways, so the city lights, the grass, then sand, and then the ocean, okay? So four distinct areas. And this little turtle what it would do is it would start heading into the grass. When it got into the grass, this bird would come down and began to peck one of its legs, always the same leg each time. It never pecked any of the other three legs, only one leg every time. And it would, you know, put holes in the leg and make that leg bloody. I mean, it was, it was bad. And every time that little turtle would try to get in the water, it couldn't stay in the water long enough because the pain, you know, salt water, it's an ocean, and so when salt gets into a wound, it's very painful. Well, the Bible says as the church of Jesus Christ that we are to be salt and light. You know, Jesus said, if the salt has lost its savor, you know, it's good for nothing but to be trodden under the foot of men. So basically, a salt is a preservative. It also protects, you know, um, if something, you know, is a meat is bad, if you salt it, it removes, you know, the uh, disease out of it and you can preserve it you can store it things like that so we are to be preservatives in a world the bible calls this world a dark and perverse generation among whom we shine as lights in the world so anyways so i believe that the ocean the salt water ocean represents the church it's the anointing of the holy spirit the fellowship of the saints the kingdom of god uh in this in this dream okay the sand is basically just the transitional place. You know, if you're building your house on sand, your sand is going to fall apart. But in a sense, the sand is the next thing that connects to the ocean. So, you know, it's better to be in the sand than in the addiction, you know, uh, of smoking grass or, you know, the city lights where you think you're seeing reality, but in a sense you're seeing smoke and mirrors and deception and, you know, the pride of life, the lust of the world, the, the, the lust of the flesh, you know, which the Bible says is not of the Father, it's of the world. And the Bible actually says, whoever is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Now you'd be like, what do you mean? If I love the world, I'm a God's enemy? If you love the way the God of this world has set up his system of commerce, set up his system of entertainment, set up his uh, media empire, and, uh, you know, the whole Illuminati, you know what I mean? The, you know, the new world order in a sense, meaning if you love this world and you don't see a problem with it, most likely your eyes are blinded to the truth. And therefore, that's why it says you're an enemy of God, because he says you are seeing what the enemy has set up in the natural world, the smokes and mirrors, the lies, the deception, the religious manipulation, the political correctness as okay with God and yet you cannot see the truth. Once you see the truth, your eyes are open to the smoke and mirrors and the irreality that is all around you. You realize that the word of God is truth. Jesus Christ said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. If you want reality, I always tell people, I say, if you want to be free, you have to allow truth to confront every area of your life which it will reveal all the lies and traps and snares of the devil. Anyway, so back to the little turtle. So the little turtle, when he get in the water, which the salt water represents the church, okay? We are salt and we are light, okay? That if the little turtle could stay in the water long enough, he would be protected and healed and he'd be able to get under the surface, meaning a lower, remember, you know, in a dream or a vision, God puts you under, meaning when deep sleep falls upon men, then he seals their instruction, okay? He gives them instruction, he puts it in an envelope, he seals it, and then he licks the envelope, he seals it, and if you want it opened up, that's why the Bible says, and also in Job 33, if you can find an interpreter, you know, then God's grace and favor comes to you, and it says they're one of a thousand, meaning there's not many people that can interpret or unseal the revelation. That's why I tell people, look, if you want to email me, uh, Bart underscore, actually don't email me because uh, I, I get thousands of emails and I, I'm pretty much out there right now in regard that, uh, anyway, so if you want to get on my Facebook, you know, Bart Druckenmiller, 
Um, if you want to message me or something, that's probably the best way to contact me. You can get on my website, uh, www.triumphantvision.com. You can email me if you want. It's just Bart underscore Druckenmiller at yahoo.com. But, you know, I'll be honest with you, I just, you know, I got so many, you know, spams and emails, it's kind of hard to keep track of all that. So the best way is probably Facebook. Anyways, so... Um, if there be one of a thousand, and I'm just mentioning myself, I mean, John Paul Jackson, uh, if you want a ministry of someone that knows how to interpret dreams and visions, he has a TV program called uh, uh, Dreams and Mysteries. You ought to check it out. It's amazing. If you want to grow in that area, you got to check to those that excel in that area. And he's, I, I think he's probably one of the top that I know of that understand that those revelations. Anyways, so... Deep calls to deep at the noise of your water spouts. That's in the Word of God. So God wants to take that little turtle, put him in the water, put him deep down there so that bird can no longer attack him. And when he's under the water, that's when that leg heals. That's when the enemy has no more access. Now, you know, when all those wounds are healed, that little guy can pretty much function in all three of those areas because he's strong enough to stand. I can go into the world and not have a problem because I know the truth. I know where my place of safety and security is. It's in the deep waters of the Holy Spirit, in the refreshing river of God. The Bible says there is a river that makes glad the city of God. So if you want to be glad, you got to be in the river of God, which remember, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Anyways, well, last night I had a dream, and again, I was listening to Julie True last night, listening to the anointed music, God on God's channel, and so God gave me a revelation, and I believe it was related to the little turtle. See, this little turtle, because he gets injured, he won't go in the water because it's painful, so he leaves the water, goes back into the grass, gets into the addiction, gets involved because he tries to self-medicate himself, and then he sees the city lights again, goes to the bars, thinks everything's wonderful, cool, everybody loves him, buys drinks for everybody in the bar, and he just gets out there again, thinking that the world has the answers. Then he gets bound up in something, he gets messed up, and basically he just keeps going back and forth, back and forth. And that's not the life that God wants us to live. Anyways, well, in this dream last night, I am, and just tell you, I don't watch a lot of TV, and so... You can ask my wife that anytime there's a major storm, I usually have a dream about it. I know that sounds crazy. I don't even know why God does it. But for some reason, this has happened many times, probably five to six times in my life, that if there was a tornado or a major storm, I know about it beforehand. I get a dream about it, and I normally never record it. But uh, on March 20th of 2013, I recorded uh, a tornado and a flood of a dream that I had, and I mean, it, it hit exactly. I mean, it was undeniable, the timing of events, because it was related to the dream, was related to a flood, it was related to a tornado, and also Obama going to Israel and talking about dividing the land of Israel, and all three of them kind of all happened at one time. And uh, in that, I said that was a precursor, or it was a prophetic picture or analogy that it was kind of like the days of Noah, that they were all, you know, just doing what they wanted to do. They were marrying. They were given a marriage until the day that the flood came and took them all away. And the, the analogy was is that if we continue to go outside the will of God, outside of God's plans, and do what we want to do with Israel, with political decisions, uh, as a country, as a nation, that eventually if we end up being the ones that betray Israel and we divide their land, that it is going to affect our land. And you go back in history and study every single time that America or any country did something to the land of Israel, the people of Israel, the you know, they are they are God's people, they're the apple of his eye. You mess with God's eye, the apple of God's eye, you're going to, you know, I mean, you know, you, someone close their eyes, you know, to protect the eyes, you're going to be in trouble. So anyways, um, we're not to do that. Anyways, so last night I had a dream and in the dream, I saw a huge snowstorm. Well, this really is going to happen. I found out Sunday night we're going to get a big snow snowstorm, probably one of the biggest storms that has been for a long time. And, uh, you know, I just got it in a dream last night. But in this dream, there was something added. I was climbing up a large hill, and there was water that was coming down uh, mixed with this snow. And I was trying to, like, sometimes I was in a vehicle, sometimes I was walking. I didn't quite understand that, but... I could not go up this hill because there was a couple feet of snow and there was, you know, floodwaters coming down too strong. 
So in the dream, I said to myself, God, how could I have got myself in this predicament? I know it's impossible for me to you know, go forward. And I hear this voice basically says, you need to let go. And I, and I said, I even argued in the dream, I said, you mean to tell me I'm to let go and just let this cold, you know, I mean, I'm gonna, you're going to die, you're going to freeze to death, and you're going to drown. I'm just going to let this thing go, and uh, I'm supposed to let go. And the revelation didn't change. I didn't hear another voice that said anything. So anyway, so I let go, you know, just like it said, and I went straight down. And as I'm going down, I'm saying to myself, so this was your answer. Well, all of a sudden, it's like I must have hit like a, I don't know, like a jump or something. But I went up in the air, and this wind all of a sudden picked me up and carried me, and it set me up upon the highest place in that area. And where it set me, I looked all around. I, it was very high, so I could see all around, and I noticed there was not one place outside of where I was that was safe and protected. So sometimes when you're in a difficult situation, when the flood waters are rising, when, when you know, the snow, the sleet, the rain, the hail, the, the whatever's going on, sometimes you can't fight upstream. Sometimes you've got to let go and let God. A little turtle that I've been talking about, remember, he was on my, well, I'm sorry, the person, which was the same little turtle, was on my arm. He begged me not to drop him in the water, and I knew it because he was dealing with rejection, okay? And that little guy is about eight, an eight inches tall, standing on my arm. He said, please don't drop me in the water. And there was water underneath me. Now the revelation was, he could have jumped in the water, okay? He was afraid to be pushed because he had experienced rejection. The water in this record was his place of healing. The salt water of the ocean is the place of healing. If he would have just let go and let God, I could have just picked him right off of my arm. That's kind of a picture of God, and, and here's the little believer who's afraid because he's been hurt, rejected, and so you know, he, you know he's just afraid of the water of the Holy Spirit. He's afraid to let go and let God. But if he would have just said, you know, would you just carry me and put me in? I could have just picked him off my arm. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if it's on video. And I could have just set him gently in the water. But he was crying. He said, please don't put me in the water. Please, I beg you, don't put me in the water. Because he was very concerned about that. And fear was keeping him from God's best. So a lot of you, because you've been hurt, you've had rejections in the past, and, you know, things have just not worked out. Sometimes you're afraid to get in the water. You're afraid maybe you were uh, injured in a church, <clears throat> rejected, uh, wounded, you know, whatever happened, you had a bad situation that happened. See, when a bad situation happens in the place of safety, that's when we a lot of times get very de uh, independent. Uh, we're not dependent on God anymore. We are, we are so independent that we reject God's plan. See, God knew the only way I couldn't go up in my dream and... Uh, if I would have just, you know, not relied upon him, I would have just, you know, drowned or froze to death. But God, because I heard the word of the Lord and he told me the timing when to let go, I ended up hitting that exact, uh, it looked like, I guess it was a jump or something, you know what I mean? That lifted me up in the air. Then the wind of the Holy Spirit carried me where I needed to be at the only place of safety. So let me tell you something. Let go and let God. Let God, you know, um, he says, I will uphold you with the, with the right hand. There you go. See, he was on, in the dream, he was on my left arm. So let me uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness, God's blessing. And, and, and he says, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. You know, the water of God makes glad the city of God. And that's where you need to be. The kingdom of God, the city of God, the water of God, the salt, the light is the church of Jesus Christ. It's the kingdom of God. It's, that's what God is king over. And so don't go to the lust of the world, the lust of the eyes, the, the pride of life, which is of the world. And remember, if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. But instead, God, ask God to open up your eyes. Uh, Paul's prayer was that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you might know the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. See, when I let go, the power, the wind of the Holy Spirit lifted me to a place of safety and I saw a trail then when I was there. I was the highest point and I saw a trail leading all the way up where, where I wouldn't be drowned and I wouldn't be flooded, and I wouldn't freeze to death, and I could make it all the way back up to the top. And the Bible talks about that, uh, it's, it says, He makes my feet like hinds feet and sets me upon my high places. And he actually talks about, you know, if you follow the ways of the Lord, you don't make, you know, um, 
you make his words your word, he says, I will set you on high and I will give you the inheritance of your father Jacob. So anyways, isn't that awesome? What a promise of God. So God wants to make glad. He wants you in the river of God. He wants you in the anointing and presence of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't want you to be disconnected, okay? I had a, a whole series of video about the dragon and how the dragon, hell, disconnects us from God's presence and his purpose in our life. So that's why the Bible says God will speak once, yes, twice, in a dream, in a vision of the night, yet man perceives it not. And he does this when deep sleep falls upon men that he might seal their instruction and hide pride from man and keep man from his purpose. So God wants to keep you from your purpose because he has a greater purpose. God wants to keep you from pride because pride goes before a fall. God wants to speak to you if you'll get on his channel, if you'll get in his river, if you'll get in the flow of the Holy Spirit where you can receive revelation from above, then God will direct your path. And I'll leave with this. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways, and he'll direct your path. You don't have to be like that little turtle in and out of the water. God wants you deep in his river. He wants you in the house of God. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together as you see the manner of some is, but exhort one another daily for as much as you see the day of Christ approaching. Now, I want to pray for you. Those of you who experienced that rejection, maybe it happened in church, maybe it happened with a friend or someone that you trusted and a loved one, you need to forgive. Ephesians 4.32 says that, um, what does it say? It says, uh, I gotta think what it says. It says, be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Look, God forgave all of your sins through Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed his blood, the Bible says that he not only died for the sins of the whole world, not only our sins, but the sins of the whole world. So when he said it is finished, he made it available for every man, woman, child, and boy or girl from every nation under heaven, whatever group they were with, whatever religion, whatever, whatever, if they would receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, be washed in his blood, blood cleansed, the name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that they would be saved and that they would be able to be in heaven when Jesus Christ comes back to take them. So forgiveness is an absolute must. If you hold the sins of somebody else, the Bible says whatever sins you retain to them, they're retained to you. So you have to release, you have to forgive. And the Lord's Prayer actually says specifically that our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It says, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Okay, so you must forgive. So I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for everybody watching this right now. God, they may feel like they're that little turtle. They're in the church, they're out of the church. They're in the world, they're, you know, in the grass, they're stuck in the addiction, they can't get free. Lord, I thank you that you would give them revelation that they need to let go and let you. They don't need to be so independent, but they need to be dependent upon you and your still small voice. That when you say to let go, that you have a purpose and a plan to lift them up on high by your spirit to take them to their desired haven, to set them on a rock, to set them on a firm foundation. So Lord, I thank you that they will release anyone that's ever wronged them. Just forgive. Look, God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. So now you forgive and you release them. And since God loved you and God forgave you, give that love out to others. Forgive them, release them. And when you release them, you will receive a new freedom, a new flow in the Holy Spirit, a new, that life-giving water will flow into your spirit and it'll transform you and make you new. So Father, I just thank you that yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, and yours is the glory forever and ever. Hey, be sure to subscribe. i got some awesome videos coming up and I just want to encourage you, man, to seek God as never before. The Bible says, if you seek me, you will find me and I will turn your captivity. You don't have to be like that little turtle. You can stay deep in the in the well of God and where the well of God is is the salvation of God is the presence of God and God says I will make glad those that are in that river the city of God all right hey God bless man thanks so much for your time I really appreciate it all right bye bye